Hi folks, Rob Stefarin here. I want to show off uh, some neat things I discovered this week. Uh, the Python and Shell uh, DreamPy, uh, the Qt4 uh, GUI toolkit, or widget kit toolkit, and uh, the Python bindings for Qt4, PyQt4. And I've tried this like four times now and I keep running long, so I'm going to go through this pretty quick. So, alright, here is DreamPy. Uh, the window is split into two halves. The top half here that uh, this is the history area. Right now the only history we have is what's initially spit out by the Python interpreter and of course then the interpreter prompt. This lower area is where I'm actually going to enter my code. And as I uh, type my code you'll see some features of DreamPy just kind of as we go along. So, uh, the first thing we see here is real-time syntax highlighting. And that's pretty cool. Uh, I haven't made much use of it yet. Pretty much the only reason uh, I find it useful is because uh, it's real time, uh, a real time hint about typos. If I just type some gibberish there, it doesn't turn purple. But import does, or rather orange, and import does turn orange. So uh, that's pretty good to know. Well, I probably messed up typing import if it's not orange. So, real quickly, I'm going to define an application. Okay, this is the next benefit of using DreamPy. I have a function called completion here. And this is a scrollable menu, and I can just double click on something to select it. So, I find that pretty handy. Now, this is a function call, so I need parentheses. I didn't type parentheses just now. You may have caught that because you can hear my loud IBM Model M keyboard. Uh, old school users unite. <laughs> but, uh, if I hit a space in DreamPy, DreamPy knows I'm making a function call. So a space gives me my parentheses in a pair so I don't have to worry about forgetting to close the parenthetical statement. And it puts my typing cursor inside those parentheses. Also, it gives me a uh, real time here, an overlay from the built-in documentation of how to use whatever I'm using. Usage, usage notes, command example, whatever nomenclature you want to use, there it is. And it's just kind of hovering over and I think I can, yeah, I can actually drag it out of my way. And it has a scroll bar here. Very cool stuff. But it's a bit of a, I think, mnemonic might be the right word. Because if you think about using a text editor or a word processor, when you're typing a sentence between words, you use a, uh, a space. You know, you hit your space bar. And in a, in a function call, you can think of, you know, going inside the parentheses is going to the next word in the sentence. And so I think binding that to the space bar was a very good decision. I like it very much. So I'm going to kind of move along here because, uh, like I say, I've been doing this a couple of times now trying to get this video to come out right, and I just I talk too much and type too little and I run out of time. Okay, so as we can see here, I'm uh, just very simply defining a window. Uh, you may have noticed there that I didn't get a command completion prompt. It's because I had a little bit of a typo. And typos, just as a little quirk, it won't give you a hint if you make a, a typo. You have to actually kind of backspace and start over to get your hint. Uh, now, here comes the cool part. Here's why I made the video. I've uh, defined a window now, and you can see I'm about to call window.show. If I do that, here's here comes the magic. Okay, now that appeared outside the capture area, so I'll drag it where you can see it. Here we go. This is the window I just defined, and as it's currently defined, that is the window. It has a size, it has a title, and that's pretty much it. Now, if I was writing all this code in a text editor to call uh, the source code file, uh, call Python to read the source code, uh, PyQt4 doesn't actually show the window whenever I tell it to and then kind of fill in the window with the components. You know, you've launched a program, you've never seen a blank window just kind of build itself up. Uh, PyQ4 is smart enough to read all the uh, definition of components in a window and not actually draw the window until it's got everything. And because Python is uh, interpreted and this is a real-time interpreted session, uh, I've got all the definitions as far as it knows so far. So that's why it gave me a window. But because the window's pretty blank, uh, let's move on 
And I want to mention something real quick. Another quirk about using DreamPy is uh, if you hit your Enter key to uh, send statements to the Python interpreter, it might not always actually send it because uh, DreamPy has a neat way of working with uh, for loops and while loops and things of that nature that are multi-line statements. If you hit your Enter key, it actually goes to another line in the code window. And you can override this by hitting holding down control and hitting enter. And so I've trained myself to just always do control enter when I mean a statement. Because that way I don't have to worry about it. Now we're about to see a neat thing here. A good example of porting issues. If you look at the documentation that's just appeared on screen, it doesn't actually uh, apply to Python. See, uh, Qt4, in case you don't know, was originally a C++ toolkit. It, its native language is C++, and some of the documentation hasn't been converted to match Python. And this is one such example. If you look, I'm going to see if I can kind of underline with the cursor here. Uh, Qobject.connect, well, the app is the Qobject. I mean, that, that kind of works. Okay, app.connect, Qobject, okay, that works. But you see signal here? You see slot here? We can't do it that way. That's the way you do it in C++. But if you watch as I type, I have to do it a little bit differently because we're in Python and we got namespace issues. So instead of just typing signal, I have to type qcore.signal. Uh, I just, that's the way it is. <laughs> uh, signal lives in qcore. So there we go. All right. But uh, I just wanted to point that out that you may get a little pop-up there that has nothing to do with uh, with actually how you'd use it in Python. It may be a little bit similar, it may not be, because there's no guarantee because it's the C++ documentation. So, you know, there's a little bit of teething that way in PyQt4, but luckily all the actual functions, everything you'd use with your code works. If you have to go the extra mile to read the documentation, well, come on, there are much worse things in life. Okay, now this is another thing I want to point out. This says true. And this says true because I've got an interactive Python session. And this function returns true when it's set up, when it's active, when the connection's there. So because this is an interactive session, we see true. We can just ignore it. Doesn't matter. So I'm going to... Uh, finish setting up my button. You see, out of habit, I actually typed parentheses. Well, there's the space, there's the neat shortcut. And, uh, like I say, it's very, very easy to get used to that. I wish I had it in Vim. Okay. And because I haven't written any code to kind of help figure out where the center of the window is, that's just a rough estimate for where to put the button. If I do button.show, there's my button. Now, notice, got a button here. It doesn't do anything. Okay, that's because even though I've set up this uh, signal for when the button's clicked to go to the slot quit, it doesn't actually quit because I need one more line of code, and that is sys.exit, okay, app.exec underscore. All right, when I do that, now this example is complete. W uh, when I click this button, this subroutine will end, it'll close the window. Also, at any point, even without the button, before I put the button in, I could have clicked the close button, and it would have worked just fine. Because PyQt4, Qt4 Qt in general, it just is very good at going native. You can tell it not to look like everything else, but its default is to look native, to function as native things do, and it's just great. So I click that, it goes away, and notice we see new session. DreamPy supports multiple sessions, and it kind of it traps, it wraps the Python interpreter. So if I do something to crash the Python interpreter or end the program I just wrote like I just did, I get a new session. I don't lose my input history. I don't lose this upper history panel that I can actually export to HTML or extract my input for some other reason to save it. So I can actually use this to edit code like a text editor, but I have real-time output so that I can design my uh, interface in real time with code. And because my logic is attached to my interface code, I've actually got a rapid prototype of the program in both its interface and its internal logic as I write my code. And if I, if I mess up a window definition, I just redo the uh, window definition, recall window.show, and there it is. It reflects the new version. I uh, hope you found this interesting. 
Thanks for watching, and give me any tips you like in the comments. Bye.